This is the beautiful little English country village of Eastern Maldit. Recorded in the Doomsday Book, basically the first tax survey of England, taken in 1086 by the Norman King William to extract money from his subjects. With just over 100 inhabitants, the village remains pretty much unchanged since then. With the 15th century church of St Peter and St Paul dominating the skyline. Apart from the peace and tranquillity, there's really not much here. However, there is a small grass farm strip runway cut into one of the fields to the south of the village. And today, we're going to visit it for the very first time. So come and join me on a lovely summer's evening as we take this little plane across the London Stansted controlled airspace on a relaxing VFR flight to Eastern Maldit. And if you ever wondered why I fly, well this is what it's all about. I'd just like to say a big thank you to Aircraft101.com, the free listings aircraft sales website, for sponsoring this episode. If you're in the market for a plane or helicopter, Aircraft101.com make it simple to search and filter to find your perfect new aircraft. And if you're after selling your aircraft, there's no better or simpler place as they are currently offering free listings. So what are you waiting for? Go visit Aircraft101.com today. My route today takes me southwesterly out of Andrusfield, then hopefully I'll be able to get a direct routing straight to Eastern Maldit. A flight distance of just 55 nautical miles, which should take me around 30 minutes. So let's get going. I love the way the Rotex just starts on the button every single time. It's late afternoon in the middle of summer and it's still 26 degrees C on the ground. The air to ground radio service has now closed for the day and with just a training aircraft parking up there's nothing going on and I have the airfield all to myself. And for traffic off Charlie said his full cruise are rolling here and right. Okay, here we go. As I start my takeoff run down Andrews Field's perfect 09 right grass runway. Build up speed quickly, then rotate and climb out into the beautiful clear blue summer sky. So, as I depart out of Andrews Field's easterly runway, I turn right and clear the ATZ. I've planned to try and get a controlled airspace crossing straight across London Stansted's Class D airspace. So I get in an early call and track the edge of the airspace in anticipation of getting a crossing. Essex Radar, good, uh, good afternoon, Golf November Juliet, Charlie Zulu for a crossing. So is that his call sign again please and pass your message. So Golf November Juliet, Charlie Zulu, a sport cruiser uh, flying VFR from uh, Andrews Field to Sywell, uh, just departed Andrews Field, squawking 7013 and uh, I'd like a zone crossing please direct Barkway. Golf Charlie Zulu, Roger, Squawk 7402, Q&H is 1020 with the basic service outside. 1020, 7402 on the Squawk basic outside, Golf Charlie Zulu. If you're wondering why I'm telling the controller my destination is Sywell and not Eastern Maldit, it's because he probably won't know the little farm strip, but as it's only a few miles from the well-known airfield of Sywell, it's better that I refer to that so he knows which direction I want to go in. So he'll move me until I'm down a bit further and then Take me over the top, I would have thought. Golf Charlie Zulu, contact, stands the director 136 decimal 2 for your clearance, expect for it to be via the 04 threshold. Director 136 decimal 2, Golf Charlie Zulu. Just as I thought, they want to route me via the active runway's threshold, which is great, as hopefully I'll get to see some cool airliner landings from above. Golf Charlie Zulu, looking for the overhead transit. Uh, yes, that'd be, that'd be great. Golf Diamond Juliet, Charlie Zulu, Roger, clear to enter the zone, not less than 1,000 feet VFR, route in towards the uh, Diamond Hangar clearance limit to hold initially. Golf Charlie Zulu is clear to enter, um, holding at the uh, hangars initially, and uh, uh, not above 1,500 for that. Golf uh, Charlie Zulu is not above 2,000 feet VFR. Not above 2,000 feet VFR, I've got 1,020, Golf Charlie Zulu. Golf Charlie Zulu, traffic information, operating 04 at Stansted. Uh, there, is, there is a constant stream of arriving traffic. Understood, There's a sir. few reasons why these bigger airports prefer you to transit as close to 90 degrees to the active runway threshold as possible, especially at busy times. Firstly, it maintains the largest physical separation between the IFR landing traffic and you. 
Although initially it seems like they are asking you to fly right across the front of the landing aircraft, you've got to remember the IFR traffic is descending all the time on the glide path of the ILS. So as they get closer to you, the vertical separation is always going to be increasing. Secondly, as you'll only be cleared through in VMC or good visual conditions, it should be possible for both of you to see each other clearly. It should be especially easy for the landing traffic to visually acquire the crossing VFR traffic as you will be transiting at 90 degrees across their view. And thirdly, by crossing at 90 degrees, you're only in the hot or the high risk area for a very short time. Oh, that was really cool. So with the controlled airspace now way behind me, I start thinking about my approach and landing at Eastern Maldit. So let's take a look at the airfield layout. Eastern Maldit is a classic farm strip located just six miles to the southeast of Northampton and it sits at 300 feet above mean sea level. There's one listed cut grass runway orientated 1634 at 604 metres or 1980 feet long, which has a marked down slope for the first third of the 16 runway. There are high tension power lines to the west of the runway, as well as some trees and noise sensitive areas close by. I think that's it there. That is it. So we've got pylons running across there, which move away from the airfield. It's a warm summer evening, and it's my favourite time to fly. Eastern Mordit traffic golf to Irma Juliet, Charlie Zulu, small cruise approaching the overhead of Eastern Mordit. No windsock. OK, we've arrived in the overhead but I can't see a windsock. I'm not too worried about which runway I land on as the winds are light. However, the notes on the airfield plate suggested that runway 16 was the preferred direction in light winds due to that slope. So I initially set up for that one. As I turn, I notice there's a small windsock well away from the strip and it definitely favors the other runway 34. So change your plan. Over the electricity pylons on a one mile final and everything's looking good. Wind's pretty much down that runway actually. So this was the right runway. Eastern Audit traffic off Charlie's it is for the final runway 34 Eastern Audit. Short final now for runway 34 and you can see that this, that strip falls away at the 16 end as we pass over some small trees and a little hedge and touch down on the uh, pretty rough uh, grass surface. Bit on the bumpy side. But we're down. As I backtrack, I noticed that the owner was there to meet me. Okay. I just put it here. After a quick chat and a look around, I'm now back in the aircraft, and as the wind has now totally dissipated, I've decided to depart from the opposite direction and I'm now backtracking runway 16. You can really see that slope now. The start of the runway also looks really rough, so I'm avoiding that area. This dips away quite a bit as well, doesn't it? I don't want to go all the way to the bottom of that. Okay, we're nice and light, all in the greens. Trim sensible. Flaps are set, everything's checked, hatched, on. This surface is really bumpy and I get thrown into the air early. Even though I'm too slow to climb away, I keep in the ground effect. That cushion of air between the surface and the bottom of the aircraft and accelerate over the runway, 
then climb out once the speed has built. That is a rough old strip. <laughs> what a lovely guy, but that is a rough old strip. We're going to go across uh, North Weald. As it's such a lovely evening, I decide to route back to Andrewsfield via North Weald's overhead, the old base for this aircraft. North Weald closed a couple of hours ago, which seems such a shame as the evening is beautiful and there's still some good flying to be had. And this is the main reason why we moved from North Weald to Andrews Field, which doesn't have these restrictive operation times. So at 9 o'clock in the evening, with the sun just about to set, we establish on short final for Andrews Field's easterly runway. However, there's lots of wildlife activity on the ground to contend with. What a stunning little evening flight. Thank you so much for watching and short field out.